Did it involve a steamroller? <laughs> no! Oh my god! An accident with a trouser press? Is that how you think I should die? I should get squished? <laughs> I don't know. Squished? Could be a grand piano falling out of the first floor window. There's all sorts of possibilities. I could die in my sleep really peacefully and fine. Can't really see you going that way. Wow. Smashing Security, episode 360, Lockbit Locked Out, and Funeral Facebook Scams, with Carol Terrio and Graham Cluley. Hello, hello, and welcome to Smashing Security, episode 360. My name is Graham Cluley. And I'm Carol Terrio. 360. Actually, you know what? I've got it mixed up, because it's 180 that they say on the darts, isn't it? And this is 360, so it's not quite as exciting as I imagined. I don't know. It's a whole circle, right? It's how many minutes there are in a um, something rather. Exactly. Six hours. Yeah. <laughs> Before we kick off, though, let's thank this week's wonderful sponsors, Collide. Blackberry and Vanta. It's their support that helps us give you this show for free. Now, coming up on today's show, Graham, what do you got? I'm going to be talking about bad vulnerability management by the cyber criminals. Ooh, okay. And I'm going to be doing something I'm calling Facebook Funerals and Fraud. Plus, today we get to hear from BlackBerry VP Kieran Holliam, who is going to talk to us about AI for good and AI for bad. All this and much more coming up on this episode of Smashing Security. Well, chums, chums, huge, huge news in the world of ransomware. Very exciting, very exciting, because the FBI and the NCA, that's the UK's National Crime Agency, have made an announcement on the day of recording uh, that they, yes, that they have delivered a catastrophic blow against the Lockbit ransomware group and its affiliates after a massive multi-year investigation, which they have called Operation Kronos. Kronos. Don't you love these sort of butch sort of Avengers style names that they give their investigation? They don't call it Operation Lumpy Trousers. Do you know what? The day they have Operation Barbie or something, I am going to celebrate. <laughs> they might have to get permission from Mattel for that one, maybe. <laughs> well, Lockbit, as I'm sure many of our listeners know, is one of the most notorious ransomware operations out there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's had lots of high profile targets like uh, Foxconn, then the tech manufacturer who make your Apple iPhones and Samsung phones, uh, IT giant Accenture and the UK Royal Mail, overseas deliveries of packages were being delayed a lot because they got hit by the ransomware. When did they get hit? Last year, Royal Mail. Yeah, last year. That's right. Last year they got hit. I felt it. Oh? We seriously felt it. Did you not? Because we have a lot of things like The Economist delivered or Private Eye. I think, so I think it was affecting deliveries going overseas rather than coming into the UK. Oh, wow. Well, I think okay. what you may be experiencing is just the general decline of the British <laughs> Royal Mail. Yes, maybe. Which, which now takes weeks to deliver a postcard. Okay, crack on. Well, anyway... Lockbit are run like a major organisation. Some have even called them the Walmart of ransomware <laughs> because they... It's quite a good little quote, isn't it? A good little sound by there. The Walmart of ransomware because they dwarfed all the other ransomware groups in terms of market share. They were the leader by quite a long way. Very organised, very professional. If someone said, oh my God, your fashion is so Walmart, would you feel flattered? I p potentially not. No, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> Maybe they would think that I'm just someone who's uh, you know careful with my cash. You know, That's true. because well, what does it matter? As long as you're clothed, as long as the essential parts are covered, does mm. it matter who's made them? I don't know. You know. Well, hmm. uh, hopefully not little children in countries where <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, good point. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Yes. You don't want it done by sweatshops. Now, it's important to realise that uh, a ransomware operation like Lockbit isn't being run by just one guy launching the attacks from his back bedroom surrounded by pizza boxes. Lockbit takes this familiar form now, which we're seeing more and more with ransomware gangs, of a ransomware as a service operation, meaning that other criminals are paying to be affiliates. They are launching attacks. They're sharing a percentage of their criminal earnings with the original gang. Hmm. And so identifying 
charging one lockbit suspect doesn't necessarily mean the downfall of the entire criminal operation. I, I suppose it depends who it is, right? If it's like the person who's making the tea, probably not. If it's the person who's in charge of all the passwords, maybe? Well, what has happened on this occasion is the authorities have seized complete control, it appears, over Lockbit's infrastructure. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, for instance, if you are currently a Lockbit affiliate, if you're one of these other hackers who works with Lockbit, hacking into companies, launching ransomware attacks, and plan to share a percentage with them and using their infrastructure, when you go to your Lockbit control panel right now, you don't see the normal interface for launching attacks and uh, you know, stealing the information. Instead, what you have is a message from law enforcement. It says, we have the source code, we've got details of the victims you've attacked, the amount of money you've extorted, the data stolen, the chats, much, much more, he says. And we may be in touch with you very soon. Have a nice day, the police are adding at the end of this message. So imagine that. Imagine being a Lockbit affiliate right now, and you've just had a message from the cop saying, we're watching, we've seen what you've done, we've got all the information. Okay, if you were arrogant, you would think, yeah, yeah, they're just sending this like automatically, they have no idea, it's going to take them ages to process the data, they'll never get to us, we'll disappear before then. Maybe, Who cares? maybe you're right, maybe you're thinking they're just bluffing, maybe you're thinking, yeah, this, yeah, this, I'm not, yeah, I shouldn't be so worried about that. Whereupon you go to Lockbit's website on the dark web where they uh, normally publish their leaks, Okay. And what you see there is that the police authorities are now dripping out information about how the gang operated and will carry on over the coming days. In fact, and this is, this is really brilliant, if you fire up your Tor browser right now and go to the Lockbit Leaks website on the dark web, you'll see what appears at first to be their regular catalogue of hacked companies. So what they do is they have a little gallery of different companies up there and there's a countdown on it as to when they are going to release the information about those companies. That's what they normally have. That's so gross. Right. So that has now been replaced. Because when you read the words, what you actually find is now that gallery, right. the actual content on them is actually a list of posts announcing what law enforcement agencies have done. And some of them have countdowns on them where they say, we're not telling you this yet, but we're going to be releasing this in the next two days. Or something see, like this. This is when this is when this is why marketing is important, people. Like you may have really, really, really interesting data, but they've obviously combined with people to come up with this idea, right? Like there's a lot of different brains being involved in here, don't you well, think? Well, they, they they are capturing the imagination of people online. You know, they are exploiting yes. social media, they're posting up little videos. So this is the information they're gonna be releasing. Sensitive information on Lockbit's cryptocurrency operations and their financing their affiliate infrastructure, detailed analysis of future iterations of Lockbit. They're doing that in association mm. with a cybersecurity vendor. Um, information about the exfiltration tool used to steal the data. Sanctions that are going to be taken against the group. A decryption tool, which has been developed by Japanese police. They've got information about five people have been charged in the States, including two Russian nationals. Jesus. Two of them it's they've quite got in sexy. custody. Let me just cross and uncross yeah. my legs. Yeah, well, it, it, well, <laughs> thank you, Sharon. Um, so, <laughs> so two of them, uh, two of these uh, uh, people have now in custody. Another two have just been arrested in Ukraine and Poland. Wow. More arrests seem likely, and they're even dripping information saying they're going to reveal the identity of the Lockbit Gang's administrator. He's called Lockbit Sup, and they're saying we're going to reveal that in a couple of days. And they've published screenshots of Lockbit's source code, its back-end admin panel, redacted images of negotiations that have taken place with victims. They've frozen over 200 cryptocurrency accounts. This is like fighting fire with fire, right? Yeah. And it's also slapping you back in the face with the same shit you've been torturing everyone else with. Yeah. It's really yeah. interesting. Well, Lockbit's credibility is now in the drain, isn't it? Right. And and people are wondering, well, well how did the police manage to do this? And I, That's what I'm wondering. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. Well, it appears the authorities were able to breach Lockbit's infrastructure because they had a vulnerability in PHP, which they hadn't patched. <sighs> so 
they hadn't applied we the all have a veil soft spot even the bad guys wow it's very similar to of course what the gang does to break yeah. into companies uh to to launch their ransomware in the first place that's embarrassing isn't it guys very embarrassing mm-hmm. so if you've been hit by lockbit folks you don't need you definitely don't need to pay a ransom anymore yeah. The authorities can help you decrypt your data. They've created this tool. If you are a victim in the UK, you can email the NCA at lockbit at nca.gov.uk. Gorgeous. If you're in the United States, I'll put links in the show notes. If you're in the United States, go to a site called lockbitvictims.ic3.gov. And anywhere else in the world, go to nomoransom.org where you can download a tool as well. So... It's all really, really good news. Uh, you know, normally we have, we have bad news, don't we, on the Smashing Security podcast? Well, no, you often do, and I'm me. <laughs> I'm just really thrilled um, that you're covering this story. I mean, there is a slight, you know, uh oh, like, uh oh, okay. Because of course, this isn't the end of ransomware. Someone else is going to fill this vacuum. Someone else is going to move in there we can imagine, and some of those criminals will probably carry on pursuing ransomware operations too. So you should continue to tread carefully, but also the ransomware gang should tread carefully as well because they never know when law enforcement might pull the rug from beneath them, just like they appear to have done with the lockpit gang as well. Yeah, amazing. Well done. Super news. Some happy news from the world of tech. <laughs> Grow. Give us some similarly uplifting, <laughs> cheery news from the world of cybersecurity, please. I think the way I'm going to tell you this tale is to imagine that I have passed away. Oh. I want you to imagine a bit there's a very sad day that happened. Yeah. Right? And I've met my maker. Right. And uh, do you want to know how I met my maker? Was it, did it involve a steamroller? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. An accident with a trouser press? Is that how you think I should die? I should get squished. <laughs> I don't know. Squished. Could be a grand piano falling out of the first floor window. There's all sorts of possibilities. I could die in my sleep really peacefully and fine. That's what I was thinking. I can't really see you going that way. Is that the way you expect to go? Wow. Yes. Oh, okay. All right, then. I'll be okay. Okay, you think a piano is going to fall on my head? Okay, thanks. That's so great. Okay, moving on. Okay. Yes. Despite me not being on the socials, my people are, you know, people that like me, yes. maybe even a listener or two. Yeah. Yeah. And they're sharing details on what happened and they're sharing lovely stories about my life. Like, oh, she was so funny and she was so patient with Graham. <laughs> <laughs> well, Crow, I certainly would have a few stories I'd be very, very willing to share on social media <laughs> in the event of your death. In fact, there's some things... What would you say? What would you say? What would you say? Well, Crow, there's some things that I, I, I frankly am not prepared to share while you're still alive and able to charge me with slander. But once you're dead, <laughs> then I reckon it's a free-for-all. Then there's various videos, audio clips... <laughs> various things but finally <laughs> i can unleash everything <laughs> you want to know what she was like let me show you um, okay okay so so you're online doing all this sharing stuff sharing all the videos all the most embarrassing things i've ever said that you know that's happened to me <laughs> and uh and at one point at one point someone maybe you yes. you're gonna ask you know when when and where's the funeral right yeah because you want to pay your respects even if whatever despite your grief you want to honour... I want to make sure you're dead in case you call the lawyers. Because <laughs> I've said all these things just based upon a report that you've died. I was just thinking, you know, a very important co-host who's played an important role in your pod life. Very important, yes. Important. At last, the funeral, unfortunately, Graham, yeah. is on a day that you're just unavailable to... I'm washing my hair. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You have a meeting. <laughs> Um, okay, let's say it's a diarrhea moment. It's a moment that everyone oh. can understand. Maybe you go on socials and you're like, sorry, and you do the little emoji. I'm planning to have diarrhea that day, so I can't go to girls. I think it might improve <laughs> your funeral, to be honest. 
give everyone something else to think about. I think it would be a good reason to not attend my funeral, okay? But, okay, all right, I'm right. But you want to be there. You want to be there. Like, it's yes. complicated for you. You've got this poo issue. You want to, mm. you know, pay your respects. But wait, you see in your feed, alongside a picture of me smiling from when I was about 32, <laughs> right? <laughs> Details of uh, an online streaming of my kick-ass funeral. Oh, perfect. So while I'm streaming, I can watch the funeral streaming on my laptop. You could be in your you could yes. be in your yes. uh, restroom or loo, depending on where you live, right? And you could sit there with your iPad on your lap. Yeah, maybe prop it up somewhere rather than have it that close to a me. A lot of people have white bathrooms. I might want to put a black curtain around stuff just to okay, somber yes. it up a bit. Maybe turn the lights off. Turn the lights off, yes. Turn the lights yes. off. Put the mute button on because if you're on the loo, you know. Well, I wasn't going to have my video camera on either. I was planning just to watch. Uh, why wouldn't you? To show your respects. Well, just... To say, I'm here, present. I'm not like sitting there doing the dishes while I'm listening to your funeral. Okay. I suppose it's important for me to be seen to be mourning your loss, isn't it? Because uh, that'd be good for my image. And you are important in my life. I hate to say this, but it would matter, right. okay. I think. Okay. Well, not to Maybe, you any longer. But you yeah. know? Okay. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? I could haunt you if you don't show up. I'm just saying. Right. Okay. Who knows? You know, so you see this picture of me, you see this, you know, streaming my funeral. You're thinking this is great. And it says, please like, share, you know, with family and friends, right? And there's my mug, my face. You're thinking, I got to do this, right? So you maybe share at this point with all our podcast listeners. Yeah, I could share it with others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might even be generous and go sticky pickles, dudes, and art musings, dudes. You might do that at this point too, right? Get all the podcast people a trifecta. Do you think the streaming service can cope with that volume of people watching at the same time? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, Grim. I don't know. It won't be my problem. You might even record it for a future episode, maybe give you a bump in listens at a time where you don't need to share any spoils. That's good. Am I right? That's a great idea, actually. I I like that idea. Yeah, yeah. The day has come. You slap on a black t-shirt, black joggers, just in case. Yep. And uh, you click through to the live stream and you click through and it says, oh, you got to you gotta register first, right? And then you'll get the link. Oh. You know, we don't want, we don't want, no scammers. They're scammers, dudes. They're scammers. And you're thinking, yeah, you know, I know all about that stuff. So I have to log in as a legitimate mourner, I suppose. And you're probably just going, sheesh, Jesus Christ, why did Crawl choose this? Was this in her funeral requirements or this? Is this her Yeti? Yeah, exactly. Her her partner has actually monetized her funeral. He's probably getting a kickback. You just have to register. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> but you're right. I would like to monetize. So you're thinking ahead. You go through and it's like, you know, right? The live stream is about to start. Okay, yes. There's the whole like live stream of Crawl's funeral. And there's a video player, like a streamy service. And there's like a little... Like, you know, loading, 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 and then it loads. And then there's a big button that says, watch live now. Here it is. Finally. Yeah. Playing some emotional Canadian music. Maybe, maybe Brian Adams in Summer of 69 is bombing out. Yeah, Bit yeah. of a larness. And, <laughs> and you press the button, right? Watch live now. Yep. Um, and you sit tall because, you, you know, you're on video on the loo, as we said earlier. So <laughs> camera's very carefully angled. You then have to enter your credit card information Jesus. to watch my funeral. And you're thinking, of course, that's why Crawl's trying to make a buck after she's dead. Making money out of it once again. And you'd be wrong, Clue, because the whole thing... No, it's your partner making a buck. You're not going to make any money out of it. Crawl, have you not worked <laughs> out how death actually works? You don't get to keep your bank account. Oh, you're right. Um, well, the whole thing is not true. It's a whole nasty, disgusting scam making the rounds with increased ferociousness. You mean you're not really dead? Well, no, actually, I am really dead. So it's targeting people that have deceased, finding their information in public forums. Yes. And this is all according to Joe Cox from 404 Media. Yeah. So these scummy douchebags are grabbing information and the mugshot, mugshot of the person who's passed your mugshot is pretty shocking so i mean that that is i think mugshot (laughs) is a good word (laughs) and then they're populating pages right right of the grieving with offers of an online streaming option for the funeral wow for people who can't be bothered to get there. Well, or people that live 10,000 miles away or 2,000 miles away or have eight kids 
or whatever. Fair enough, yeah. And you're thinking, I want to show my respects. Yeah, that's fair So you enough. click on it. Yeah. And you're actually going down a nefarious path run by jerks who are trying to get your credit card information and information from you, your registration information. And what's more even confusing is in some cases, yeah, these funerals are being live streamed. And this is how the information is being passed along through of word of mouth, through groups. Yeah. According to 404 Media, Facebook is awash with scams that direct visitors to fake mm. live streams of funeral services preying on relatives and friends of the deceased. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you, are you saying Facebook is doing a bad job of policing something that's going on on its network? Just wait to these words. Tell me what you think. Just give me two paragraphs right. and then tell me what you think. Okay, there have been pockets of media coverage of these funeral scams over the last year or so, but the scam appears to have ramped up, says 404 Media. Beyond the US outlets, Australia, the UK, and Ireland, uh, as recently as last week, have all reported on the scams. And this Irish one is particularly stomach churning because the deceased person was six years old. Oh. Like, it's just, so 404 Media sent a specific Facebook account that was peddling such bogus funeral streaming services to Meta, right? The parent company of Facebook. Yes. And a spokesperson responded in an email. Are you ready? Yeah. Quote, we don't allow this content on our platform and remove the page brought to our attention. Oh, good. Okay, so... That says to me they are being reactive in their process as opposed to proactive, don't you think? They're saying, you tell me about it, we'll take it down. Otherwise, you know, we're busy. That, I'm afraid, is their approach, isn't it? It's not good enough. No. When 404 Media asks for comment from Meta that requests include the specific question of whether Facebook proactively searches for accounts involved in this sort of scam, Meta did not answer the question directly and instead said it encourages people to report the content to the company and to the police. I think they have answered the question there, haven't they? So there's no proactive yeah. stuff. Yeah. It sounds to me, pardon mon anglais, horseshit. <laughs> Cheval poop. <laughs> Cheval poop. Exactly. <laughs> Any of you who are in this situation where you're having, you're facing someone who's uh, in this situation, be very careful about online. Go to the main website of the funeral home, is what I think I'd say at this point, not social media. Maybe leave explicit instructions in your will that you do not want to be live streamed, or you don't want anyone who has a Facebook account being invited to your funeral. What's the problem with the funeral, funeral being live streamed? Like, my family's all around the world, right? Like, my family and my good friends. And they may not be able, like, if I die at a ripe old age, they're all good and they're alive. They're going to be, like, in their 80s and 90s. I suppose if they couldn't get a visa or something. Yeah. Okay. I can understand why people would pay to watch, you know. It's going to cost me so much petrol driving half an hour to go to Carol's funeral. Or I could pay <laughs> a fiver and stay at home and watch it in my undies. <laughs> With Silence AI, the team at BlackBerry are helping you keep one step ahead, stopping more attacks earlier and with less effort than other solutions in the market, and that's independently tested and proven. The lightweight AI offers broad coverage, consistently low false positives, and quick threat responses, supporting endpoints seamlessly. Now, many solutions boast about how little time it took them to respond after a threat emerged, but with BlackBerry's Silence AI, you'll find out how long before, and it can be months or years, it has already protected its customers. Staying one step ahead is central to everything BlackBerry does. And in fact, it's your 24 by 7 AI-driven security partner. So visit smashingsecurity.com slash BlackBerry to find out more. And thanks to them for supporting the show. This episode of Smashing Security is sponsored by Collide. Wouldn't it be great if a device which lacked compliance or lacked security was denied access to your organization's SaaS apps and other resources? Because this would mean that the hackers who had nabbed the unlucky employee's credentials, for example, could not gain access to your assets. It would effectively lock them out. 
Welcome to Collide, a world where access is only given to approved, secure devices. As the administrator, you can manage every operating system, even Linux, from a single dashboard. Another bonus of Collide, employees can often fix their own problems without involving IT support, meaning less resources are needed to effectively operate a more secure environment. Collide is the device trust solution for companies with Okta. Collide ensures that if a device is not trusted or it's insecure, it is denied access to your cloud apps. Learn more at collide.com slash smashing. That's K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash smashing. And huge thank you to Collide for sponsoring the show. Smashing Security is also sponsored by Vanta. Managing the requirements for modern security programs is increasingly challenging and time consuming. Enter Vanta. Vanta gives you one place to centralize and scale your security program. Quickly access risk, streamline security reviews, and automate compliance for ISO 27001, SOC 2, and more. You can leverage Vanta's market-leading trust management platform to unify risk management and secure the trust of your customers. Plus, use Vanta AI to save time when completing security questionnaires. Smashing security listeners, you get 20% off Vanta. All you lucky sausages have to do is visit vanta.com slash smashing to claim your discount. That's V as in Victor, A-N-T-A dot com slash smashing. And thanks to Vanta for sponsoring the show. And welcome back. And you join us at our favourite part of the show, the part of the show that we like to call Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week. And Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week is the part of the show where everyone chooses something they like. It could be a funny story, a book that they've read, a TV show, a movie, a record, a podcast, a website, or an app. Whatever they like. It doesn't have to be security-related necessarily. Better not be. Well, my Pick of the Week this week is not a Pick of the Week. It's a nitpick of the week. Oh. Do you remember last week when I spoke about subtitles? Mm-hmm. And I said <laughs> that I was very annoyed about the subtitles on one day on Netflix because every time the <laughs> every time one of the lead characters happened to go like that, do a little mouth tick, click, their it mouth, would say, mouth tick, yeah, it would say clicks mouth, and I'm afraid. My nitpick of the week this week, Roll, is you and a few Smashing Security listeners. Oh. Because after that episode was broadcast, yes. some Smashing Security listeners got in touch. <laughs> Matthew G, for instance. <laughs> Hi, Matthew. I've got a nitpick with him. I don't. And I've also got a nitpick with someone who called themselves Insane in the Brain. Yeah, I don't have any problem with them either. They suggested <laughs> I might have goofed up the settings in my Netflix app. And that's why it was saying things like bright instrumental music is playing and clicks mouth. What they were suggesting is that you had also like audio description stuff on. So right. not well, just the, yes. uh, the, the, you know, the translation or the mm -hmm, subtitles, mm -hmm, but also mm -hmm, the audio mm -hmm. descriptions. Yes. OK. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have just hanged yourself. I was explaining it for everyone else. I know you're very angry, so well, maybe. <laughs> well, you, you have now, I'm afraid, given me all the evidence I needed. And furthermore, I saw you reply to some of these people, gleefully agreeing with them. Yes. And saying you should have picked me up at the time. Yeah. But no, I spent some time investigating this issue. I've gone back and I have checked. And on Netflix, on one day in English, there are no subtitle options available other than the ones which also tell you irrelevant information about keys jangling and lip smacking. How many of you are right now hitting your keyboard to show that Graham is wrong? Meanwhile, I have also learned. So I went back and I watched an episode or a little part of an episode and sure enough, it came up and I looked at all the subtitle options and there's nothing there. Meanwhile, I have learnt the difference between subtitles and closed captions and audio descriptions. Okay, very good. 
Would you like to know what the difference is, Carol? Yes, we would. All of us would. I'll also put a link in the show notes because you, during this very section, have demonstrated that you don't properly know what the difference is. <laughs> because you have referred to audio descriptions. Let me tell you right now, audio descriptions are for people who can't see. So audio descriptions are not displayed as captions Yes, they're on said the out screen. loud. You're absolutely right. Yes. They are said out loud. So you'll have yep. someone saying... Well, they won't. I say someone appears. The guy has a gun at her head. But yeah, right. He, he, yes, exactly. Now, so that's fairly easy to understand. But what's the difference between closed captions and subtitles, you're wondering? Not really. Because we tend to say, as a generic term, subtitles. It turns out that subtitles are translations. Only if it's translated is it actually technically a subtitle. So, so if you're watching a French movie, for instance, because you can't speak French, it would put up the subtitles in English, right? But if you are watching something where you can't hear it properly, then you put on closed captions, That's which will put up in the same language. Super What's interesting, going on? Mr. Cluey. Very interesting. Yes. It does not, however, it does not, however, explain why Netflix are calling what I was seeing subtitles. And anyway, I'm a bit annoyed. I think there's a number of issues with Netflix. In his defence, Matthew G did point out that kids' profiles on Netflix can reset the caption settings on other profiles. Although that wasn't happening in my case because I looked into it. And also in defence of insane in the brain, he wasn't quite as brusque as Matthew G, uh, who tut-tutted at me for being a dumbo. So I think well, I, ha- I think I am vindicated. He's not wrong. Um, well, I, th- I, th- I think I am vindicated. Netflix sorted out. And that continues to be my nitpick of the two weeks. Thank you. Crow. Yeah. <sighs> no, it's fun for me. It's so fun for me every week. It's so fun for me. Crow, do you have a pick of the week? I do have a pick of the week. And, um, you know, sometimes I have them and I'm thinking this is not his bag, right? I, I think it might be right. some listener's bags, but I don't think it's your bag. But this one, I think it's in your wheelhouse. I think it's up your street. I think, you know. All right. Well, let's see. Okay. It's a movie called Fingernails. Ooh. I would refer to it as an eccentric sci-fi romance <laughs> with a teeny tiny dark underbelly. And comedic okay. bits. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, yeah. you and your partner are happy, right? You're in a happy place. That's all good. You might even use the term in love. Yes, absolutely. Right, perfect. Okay, good, good, good. Now, what if there was a love institute in downtown Oxford? Right. Right, where you could certify scientifically through the state of, you know, analysis and biosamples, whether you were really, really, really in love and she was really, really, really in love with you. Would you want to be tested? It sounds like an episode of Black Mirror. It sounds absolutely horrific. (laughs) I think that is a very good um, thing to think, right? So uh, in the movie Fingernails, this is by Christos Niku, we find the glorious, and she is really glorious, uh, Jessie Buckley. She plays Hannah teacher, right, in a committed but unexciting relationship with this guy, Ryan, who's played by Jeremy Allen White. Now, this relationship has been certified by the Love Institute, right, which means it is scientifically, truly, big time, real in love. Fantastic. For both of them. Yep. Fantastic. Um, the test, do you want to know what the test what is? What is the test? Both partners have to submit to the agonizing process of having a fingernail extracted from the root what for analysis why would you do that to know if you're in love or not maybe you're lying to yourself maybe your partner's lying to you and you don't believe them well i might not love someone if they've had their fingernail pulled off maybe i really love their fingernails well it depends which one what if you love their index one but not their pinky one you might go hey go for it good go point for it. Get rid of that manky one. Could you? Could I offer them a toenail instead? That's what I asked. You see, much easier. So, so this is all happening. There's a love triangle thingy, which I'm not going to ruin for anyone. It crops up, and the drama ensues. 
Right. Uh, Miss Buckley is uh, terrific. I really, I thought she was fantastic. It's one of those things that could have been extended into a whole series and it really just has a movie's worth. Um, it's sweet and quirky. You can find it on Apple TV+. Plus, and it's called Fingernails. And that is my pick of the week. Crow, can I ask a question about Fingernails? Yes, you may. Did you watch it with the closed captions on? Notice I didn't say subtitles. No, I did not. Could you do that before I decide to watch it? Just so I don't get annoyed? No. (laughs) I have boundaries now. I don't, I'm not taking on any of your garbage. Deal with it. (laughs) Well, it sounds like an interesting pick of the week. Now, you've been chatting to the folks at Blackberry this week, haven't you? I have. Kieran Holliam. He's a VP at Blackberry and he talks to us about AI from the profesh defensive side and also from the attacker side. Check it out. All right, so today we welcome Kieran Holliom to Smashing Security. Kieran is a Vice President of Cybersecurity at BlackBerry, looking after the UK, Ireland, and emerging markets. It's a big job. So welcome to the show, Kieran. Thanks, Carol. Lovely to be here. Yeah, well, I'm so glad you're here because we are talking artificial intelligence. And I personally would really like to better understand how AI is used in threats from your point of view at BlackBerry, but also in, you know, in defense. So it's amazing to have an expert in the room. So thank you so much for being here. So first, can you tell me a little bit about you so um, our listeners can understand, like, how did you end up looking after cybersecurity at BlackBerry? I've been working in the sort of IT industry for about 25 years, helping customers and and um, organizations solve you know problems with technology. And about I don't know 10 years ago, uh, 12 years ago, um, I, I decided to sort of jump into the dark side, if you like, and, and come to, across the cybersecurity uh, information technology sphere. Um, and I call it the dark side is because I think you know 10 years ago, security was seen as a bit of a blocker and a bit of a they always say no to stuff, and um, you know uh, that's certainly my experience. And 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 you kind of I didn't understand why, so I thought I'd dip my toe into cybersecurity and get an understanding of what was exactly going on and why. And and I've sort of really really enjoyed the the sort of past uh, 10, 12 years in this in this part uh, of the world of uh, IT, especially as it's you know the ascendancy of how critical it is for organisations now to get the right secure, cybersecurity posture because. If you if you're not doing that, you, you, your business or organization is is a significant risk, right? It's true, and you're totally right about it being a bit of a blocker. Ten years ago, I used, I worked in the market for 15 years, and I remember traveling my first time out with my, you know my my fully locked down computer from the cybersecurity firm I worked at, and I couldn't get access to the hotel no matter what I tried. We had three experts trying, ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm glad times have changed. Um, so we're here to talk about artificial intelligence, the big hot term of the day. And when people talk about AI today, they typically mean like generative AI, like ChatGBT and other language models. But artificial intelligence as a technology has lots of guises, right? Yeah, I think um, it's, it's a really important point. You know, as you say, there's a lot of talk about AI right now, but not all uh, AI is created the same. A lot of the models we see today uh, that call themselves AI uh, are really not AI and, and they're not mature enough or good enough for, for today's challenges. Mm. You kind of see this by the outcomes that they produce. So when we talk about generative AI, that's about the interaction and providing people with the information they need. From our side, we also talk about um, preventative AI and that's that's really, really important. And, that, and we feel that you can't really exist in the world of cybersecurity AI if you're not being able to do the preventative and the gen AI um, as well. You know, I think a lot of leading uh, cybersecurity companies talk about AI and we looking outwardly into the market see models being used and then we see how they fail or they don't, they're not able to do what they're supposed to be doing. Mm. In fact, just recently, I think a couple of weeks ago, um, and there was a, an imaginatively named um, uh, new technique for hacking called pool party. I love the names. <laughs> pool party. 
I, 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 do you think they just sit around, you know, coming up with these names? Anyway, pool, pool party. <laughs> um, and it was basically a new way of, in, you know, injection techniques that uh, enable you to go in and trigger malicious code. Now, we, we would have expected a lot of organizations out there that uh, are using AI, uh, inverted commas, um, to be able to, you know, detect and stop this mm. from executing. In fact, the report that you can find online shows that leading EDR companies in the world were unable to detect and prevent um, pool party. Hmm. And that that really is, is, a, is AI really AI at that point? Because if it's generative AI, it's not going to stop it executing, right? Okay, so that's what it is. So you're surprised that people that kind of waved the AI banner weren't able to stop this. It makes it complicated, though, for us outside the market, I think. Yeah, it's really complicated. Yeah, I think um, we kind of lose a lot of people along the way because we start talking in IT speak and uh, cybersecurity speak. And, you know, I, I think if the AI at a, at a higher level, if the AI is really to be understood by the general public and organizations, we need to um, do that education piece as to what AI is and, and and how it propagates and the good and bad. You know, AI can be used for good. And, and I think that's a, that's a really important topic as well. But from a being used for bad and how do you fend against it perspective, um, then, you know, not all AI is the same and how you apply different models um, is, is really important. AI will have a tremendous impact, not going, is having a tremendous impact on, on, on the future, right? And and that's especially true when we talk about cybersecurity in from a defensive posture perspective. You know, BlackBerry've been using it for AI for over a decade now. Um and in a in a space as sort of as broad as uh, cybersecurity, it's really important to recognize that as you've just said, you know, different model AI models can be good at solving different problems. And when it comes to threat defense, from our side, two general categories, right? As we've as we've talked about, predictive AI, uh, where AI models can automatically stop, you know, threats. Um, and automatic is the important point there, right? They make their own decisions, so automatically stop um, and anticipate, you know, threats and zero day activity before they happen. So, so the predictive model effectively goes in very early in the sort of kill chain or attack sequence um, makes a high confidence decision that that is a malicious activity and then and then stops it and you know proactively you know stops the attack and shields the user or organization from that um uh, from that threat these sort of predictive models don't converse with with people, they're not chatbots. Um, they're not friendly. Right. <laughs> they're, they're sort of you know math models that uh, that we that we all think of. Um, but then on the other side, um, we've got the this generative AI, as, as you mentioned. Now these models are sort of designed to interact with people, and their purpose really is to make sense of large amounts of information. And to give that that individual they're interacting with or that organization uh, they're interacting with the ability to speed up um, the understanding of the situation, give them the knowledge base, and then uh, enable them to make um, sort of better and informed decisions. But generative AI models, gen AI models, you know, don't proactively stop uh, attacks on their own. Right. Okay. So um, if we talk about the threats that you see at BlackBerry, do you have a category that you now call like artificial intelligence threats? Is that how, or is there more granularity in that? I think if if you look at the world of um, the threat actors right now, mm. it, I would suggest every single one of them is using AI in, in, in one way, shape or form. Right. So um, it's not it's not a case, and I guess the sophistication levels vary. So if you've got nation state, then I would say they're heavily invested in um, in uh, in AI. If you've got um, you know your your sort of um, your your backroom hackers, then they're probably using some form of AI to to either make their attacks uh, more frequent, i.e., speed them up. Um, or uh, or speed to market, if you like, get them out there quicker, uh, or secondly, make them more effective. So, so I do think that every attack really is got has probably these days got some form of AI in it. Yeah. 
It makes sense too, because I mean, I know lots of developers that when they write a little bit of code, well, the first thing they do is run it through some AI <laughs> chatbot, you know, what as you call an interactive one to just see if there's any mistakes. In yeah. it, right. So why wouldn't the bad guys do that too? Yeah. And I guess to your point, they're also probably using, um, can I say penetrative AI <laughs> as opposed to you know, preventative? So they're using kind of AI models to try and get in to bypass, you know, traditional security. A hundred percent. Yeah, I think you know certainly the most the most frequent is um, the sort of the the attacks we're seeing are that generative pre-trained transformer. So we know that best is Jet GPT, but there are others out there like Worm GPT, for example, and they're designed to do exactly what you just said: run some code through. Um, do it as quickly as possible, get it out, test it, bring it back, you know, um, do the same again. And just keep doing it until you hit the jackpot and get through and are able to sort of ransomware someone. So I think if you look at it on an axis of um, one is volume, one is efficacy, what GPT or, or AI gives you is the ability to to do to do both quicker. Um, so you can you can get more volume out there uh, and have more efficacy, and 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 that's the scary thing. Um, the ability for organisations to be able to scale to that demand without using and deploying AI themselves um, is is a is a real scary thought. Yeah. And if you think about it, like you were saying, BlackBerry has been in the AI space or working with artificial intelligence for at least a decade. How many technology firms out there have just jumped on the bad wagon, right? Yeah. So, okay. So tell me, how is BlackBerry able to harness the power of AI as a component of cybersecurity? Because without it, we're sitting ducks, I'm guessing, <laughs> in this new world. <laughs> so, you know, we need it. I think we're sort of a kind of an inflection point, really. That's going to have a profound impact on technology, security, and and humanity as a whole. And as I've just talked about, I think AI can be good, and it should be seen as as a whole. You know, good. You know, we can make some medical advances. We can make things easier and accessing services and things. That that's all brilliant, right? But we fundamentally we have to um, really get to grips with the security element underneath it. And I think that democratization, if you like, or the consumerization of AI, which is now easy available to everybody. You know, previously, if you had the resources mm. or the finances to go and buy it, you could, but now it's everyone can use it. That lower entry uh, or barrier to entry is 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 really going to start seeing in the market in the, in the world the, the the prevalence of AI and everything we do. And um, you know, we're already seeing it. Mm. Those AI nefarious actors are using AI, you know, to get better and faster at phishing and social engineering and goodness knows what. And then we've got this other thing that hangs over us, which is, you know, polymorphic malware, um, which in itself scares me. You know, it's, it's, it's inherent ability. And you know, if those that don't know what it is, it has its inherent ability to mutate itself in its appearance to, to continuously to you know, get around all of the, the security measures we put in place to, to deal with that. So we, we, we couple the AI as a, as a, effectively a consumer, you know, downloadable consumer, uh, consumable effectively polymorphic malware, and then we throw that at organizations that are still trying to do signature updates, it, it really is, uh, really does scare me. Um, mm -hmm. So organizations must, must act now to make sure that they get AI uh, in their in their vernacular, in their lexicon of, uh, of cybersecurity defense. Otherwise, they're going to be outpaced and, and unfortunately, they will suffer. Are you able to give us a few things that people uh, should look out for when kind of, so imagine, you know, you're, you're using traditional scanning methods. You realize it's not enough. You want to kind of up your game and get something that's going to help you that has AI involved. What things to look for? Because I'm sure there's some maybe less reputable or quality software out there and maybe there's things they can look out for. Clearly, I'd say come and talk to BlackBerry. <laughs> That, that's my job. Um, but I think outside of that is is act now. I think, you know, the few things that we need to do is act now. AI is here to stay. It is here. It is being used today to cause financial harm to organizations and individuals. So act now. Um, there is a lot of great stuff that the NCSC um, in, in the UK do around AI and what's coming and their judgments and all that sort of stuff. Go and read that. And then reach out to organizations that have been doing this for a long time. 
Um, and the reason I say that deliberately is that the, the models that we talk about are very sophisticated and, and they, they take time to learn and build on experiences. You know, for years and years, we've been throwing billions of data points at our models for, for over 10 years. And our models are exceptional at being able to prevent stuff. So go and go and talk to, to those organizations that have been doing this for a while. Mm. Make sure that those organizations fit uh, into your environment. Okay. And what I mean by that is it's very easy to go and buy, f- buy from an organization that you know, on paper is fantastic, but do they fit your culture and your organization's ability to, uh, to move at the pace that you want to, for example? So that's, that's really important. But number, number one is act now. Number two is make sure that the organization you're talking to is the right fit. And lastly, I, what I, the last thing I would say is um, act now. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's really, really important. I, I cannot stress that enough. It, um, we are seeing daily activity whereby, um, you know, AI is being used. And if you're still relying on, you know, old DAT updates or signature-based scanning, um, you, 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 you will get hacked. It's not a case of when, it's just... yeah. You will get hacked. And, and I think the other phrase is, when will this attacking end? Probably, right? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not the time to act like an ostrich and put your head in the sand. It's basically what I'm hearing here. Act now. <laughs> 100%. Act now. Kieran Holliam, Vice President of Cybersecurity at BlackBerry. Thank you so, so much. Listeners, you can learn more about artificial intelligence and how BlackBerry is harnessing its power and defending against its threats by visiting smashingsecurity.com slash BlackBerry. That's smashingsecurity.com slash BlackBerry. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks very much. Very, very cool. And that just about wraps up the show for this week. You can follow us on Twitter at Smash Insecurity, no G. Twitter will allow us to have a G. We also have a Mastodon account. And don't forget to ensure you never miss another episode. Follow Smash Insecurity in your favourite podcast app, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify and Overcast. And huge thank yous to our episode sponsors. That's BlackBerry, Collide and Vanta. And of course, to our wonderful Patreon community. It's thanks to them all that this show is free. For episode show notes, sponsorship info, guest lists and the entire back catalogue of more than 359 episodes, check out smashingsecurity.com. Until next time, cheerio. Bye bye. Bye. Sorry, my voice is still cracky. Oh, do you think this? Do you think the end is near? Are you give, are you give me some warning. <laughs> I'm gonna croak. My voice is croak, and uh oh, uh, yeah. No, I'm just apologizing to any listeners that have made this far. I'm sorry, my voice is not repaired yet. Some people like that. Some people like it when a you know a woman gargles with you know whiskey and razor blades it's like a you know sexy kind of sound isn't it <laughs> some hate it though.